Okay, so we did adding, subtracting, multiplying with complex numbers. And so naturally, the next thing to think about is dividing them, right? Well, it turns out we don't really divide them. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a situation so that we can write the um, number in a plus bi form. Okay, so that's really the goal. So say you have something like, you know, a plus bi over c plus di. What you really want to do is you want to get that denominator to be a real number. Because if it's a real number and not, uh, uh, if it doesn't have an imaginary part, then you can treat it like just a denominator, and you can write a and b in terms of that real number. So let's say this equals some real number r, then you could, would have a plus bi over r, or a over r, which would be a real number, plus b over r, which would also be a real number. So that's kind of the big idea here that we're going with. Um, what we have to do is get that denominator to be a real number. And the way we do that is by multiplying by the, what's called the complex conjugate. So if you have a plus bi over c plus di, you're going to multiply the denominator by the complex conjugate, and that's going to be c minus di. So remember back when you were working with polynomials, however long ago that was, and you would have this situation that is like the difference of squares, right? And so the middle term drops out. So the i part drops out, and you just have the c squared, and then you have the d squared i squared, but i squared's a real number. See, so you'd have c squared, and then you'd have minus d squared i squared. But remember, that's a negative 1. So then you're just going to have c squared plus d squared, OK? And that's going to be a real number. So that's, like I said, that's the big idea. Um, not only do you multiply the denominator by the conjugate, you also have to multiply the numerator by the complex conjugate. Okay, so don't forget that. Um, that's my explanation. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about complex conjugates. So it's what I said over here that we're trying to get the difference of squares, that situation. So if you have 3 minus 4i, the complex conjugate is going to be 3 plus 4i. If you have negative 5 plus 2i, the complex conjugate is going to be negative 5 minus 2i. The only thing that changes is, is the, the symbol between the two parts. If it's plus, then it changes to minus, OK? Um, you could have, like, the square root of 3 plus the square root of 7i. I don't know if you're going to see anything like that, but you could. Anyway, that would be the square root of 3 minus the square root of 7i. And I put the i in the back. I don't think you're going to see that, but anyway, just playing around with it. Complex conjugates. Okay. Actually, I do see one. It's coming. Okay. It's a little bit different. All right. It says find the complex conjugate of each number. So here you have a number. It's a complex number. It has a real part and an imaginary part. It says 2 plus i square root 5. The conjugate's going to be 2 minus i square root 5. Now they put the i in front of the radical, but we talked about that. That's OK. All right. The other one, that's a little bit different, right? It just has the imaginary part, right? It just has negative 1 half i. But you could think of it as 0 minus 1 half i. So the complex conjugate would be 0 plus 1 half i they probably aren't going to write the 0. They're probably just going to write 1 half i. That would be the complex conjugate. So it's the imaginary part that you're taking the opposite of. Okay? You're going to see an example in the next video of how we're going to put this all together and show you how it's going to work out so that when we're dividing complex numbers, we can get our answer as um, a complex number in standard form.